Hey, this is Knots here. Today we're going to be talking about one versus one rank sprint. This is on the public test server, 8.11 testing. I want to show off some matchups, leave my thoughts in general about the uh, system, and, you know, things that I'd like to see change, or maybe for the future, for the next rank sprint, one versus one, what they could do to make sure that this is leveraged in the right way. Now, 8.11 has a lot going on. We have a tier 10 rank season that's activating in two days with aircraft carrier consideration. So I know there's a lot of people who are loving that, but this is something different. This is a rank sprint. It's gonna go live, I think mid December. And I don't know when the sprint actually activates, but it's during the holidays. And for me, I immediately interpret that as not too serious. Something to have a little bit of fun with, but at the end of the day, if it's not making you feel like your play experience is worth your time, just walk away from it, right? Uh, so that's the first thing that I would say. Even if you are totally just vehemently against the idea, the best thing to do is remember, it's rank sprint. It's not serious. Don't treat it as such. It's not life or death. You know, you get a bad matchup. Okay, if you get two, then walk away. That's what I would do. You know, I wouldn't look at this as anything other than a potential opportunity to practice some of your worst matchups or some of your best matchups in the game in a very controlled environment. You can plainly see that the maps are very unique. Uh, these are shrunk down versions of maps that exist currently in the game. Yeah, it's just one section. They've artificially created some capture points. I believe every single map has two capture points overlaid on each other so that someone could go into one area of the map and capture two. And with the added benefit of both captures, it's very easy to win the game if the opponent just walks away or doesn't want to contest. And uh, French DDs. I bet you're going to see quite a lot of them in this one versus one rank sprint. It is a tier eight matchup, so you're not quite ridiculously broken at tier 10. I mean, some of these ships are just incredibly powerful. So tier eight is a little bit more reasonable, but you still have crazy matchups like this. What could the Charles hope to do? Me and my Vladivostok, all I need to do is sail and contest both of the points and eventually cap it if he doesn't want to. Uh, but I will eventually win the game unless this cruiser tries to kill me. And yeah, sure, he can do a good job, but I do a lot better job at killing him than he does at killing me. And already 50% of his life gone. I'm sure he really enjoyed that. And as he closes the distance, conceivably to use his torpedo system, we're just waiting on the guns to reload. If we can get the Citadel, we knock him out. So, you know, these matchups, they're not fair. They're not supposed to be fair. And that's one of the controversial topics here. Uh, my initial impression was, why don't we just have mirror matchups? That way, every single time you queue into a match, you can't be disappointed. But then, on the other hand, I look at it as, well, mirror matchups are great to train on, but wouldn't it be also awesome to train on your worst matchup? You know, give you a lot of time in that scenario in one versus one. And you might be surprised just how much other ships end up influencing situations very similar in random or clan. But there's literally nothing else to help them. And uh, this is a DD mirror. And I'm in the French DD, of course. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm probably going to play a lot of French DDs in this because they rush through the game. I think my average game length in a French DD is two or three minutes. It's perfect for quickly grinding through the rank sprint. And they are overwhelming in a bite-sized chunk. They have, obviously, their torpedoes, great for assassinating people. And they also have main battery reload, great for assassinating people as well. So the cooldown situation for them is where they have the advantage. And this one versus one, that's when they have the advantage. Uh, now we have another mirror matchup. Aircraft carrier versus aircraft carrier. So you're, I'm just going to show off some of these things. Leave my thoughts on the matchup itself and the viability on whether you actually want to try and make it work. Uh, I've seen a lot of people say, oh, well, everyone's just going to be an aircraft carrier. They're going to hide and they're going to kill. Uh, clearly, being an aircraft carrier, 
doesn't help that much. If there's a French TD who can rush to the other side of the map in like 45 seconds, uh, there's always a bigger fish. As Qui-Gon said, there's always something that's going to be better than him. You can't help that in this mode. And you shouldn't help this. If you're attempting to try and help that feeling, uh, you're going to be disappointed. And I highly recommend you not do that. You really just should look at this as an opportunity to have random training at, in mirror matchups and also in your worst or average matchup. Don't look at it as super serial or something that you should never lose or never win. Remember, it's one versus one. No one's going to save the star scum you. You know, the opponent who does beat you, I mean, he's legitimately probably going to beat you. He's either going to capture the base or he's going to kill you. Uh, that doesn't feel unfair either. And also, one cool thing about this, it could cause new builds to surface. You know, builds specialized in one versus one. And that's exciting too. Because we don't really get an opportunity to see too many crazy builds. Uh, normally, the builds are pretty straightforward. You know, clan battle build and then random battle builder. Uh, but there's not a lot of different builds. Like, obviously, secondary battleship nearly non-existent and random in clan but secondary battleships in this actually are really really good because you know where the opponent has to come he has to come into the area and try and attempt to ta capture and look at how ridiculous this is this is ridiculous cv's point blank range i was afraid he wanted to ram me all i was trying to do is get into the area where i could capture both bases and we're we are working on each other it is taking a hell of a long time to actually kill each other. And I think that's what people are ultimately going to view this. They're either going to get really into it and try and experience everything it has to offer, you know, the worst and the best, or they're going to try and rush through it, get it done real quick, you know, French DD their way through a 30 minute endeavor and get rank one with rank sprint, right? I think either way is a good thing. Because it's one versus one training. Everyone needs it, even the best. We don't get to do it that frequently. And for it to occur at such a rapid rate, I'm really excited for this. The opportunity to see something different in the game and uh, for it to not be too serious. I don't have the frustrations with my teammates as I would. You know, my only frustration would be, oh, it's a bad matchup. You know, matchmaker won this one. But, you know, at the end of the day, that's not that bad because it's giving me that opportunity to experience it. The, this is the, literally the worst scenario ever. Okay, how do we do? You know, how can we go toe-to-toe -to -toe against a CV and do good damage? It doesn't happen that frequently. It takes a long time, right? So I just want to use this as a chance to improve my play. And because I see and view it like that, and I think that's what Wargaming wants from it, I kind of feel like Wargaming should incorporate it in a more established mode at some point in the future if this ends up working out because it's just a good way of improving your skill. It's putting you in an uncomfortable position and it is really highlighting you versus the opponent. This is something that really feels great in a game like this because the classes are so different and unique. Now, could it work with submarines? I don't know. Someone on uh, stream was like, what would subs be like on this? Uh, I have no idea. Um, some of the matchups, they just, oh, uh, boy. The aircraft carrier against a good DD player that rushes them, oh, man, it, it, it's almost impossible. If they just rush to you, it's really hard to kill people quickly with some of these classes. Uh, Battleship is another example. You could you could be in a very similar situation for a perfectly broadside, full overpin, and you know what if the opponent plays it outright or he lands a torpedo, and I have to try and retreat off of this area. You know the situation can be frustrating for everyone, but uh, certainly not more frustrating than going up against a battleship and the Charles Martel, right? <laughs> but you know we're going for the base captures and. Uh, Highly, highly, highly encourage every battleship player. You definitely want to look to try and capture the area and force the opponent to come to you. And, you know, maybe that's a commentary on how battleships should just play out in a normal game. They take territory and force the opponent to come to them. 
I don't need to go over to the Charles. He has to come to me. I'm going to win this game if he does nothing. And I try and reiterate that on my stream and my videos, but this highlights it more than anything could ever do. There's, there's literally no one else except him. I get to consider him and only him in my strategy. And that is a very attractive game to me. I've heard players go, you know, what about two versus two? What about three versus three? Those are also appealing, but I think that if you really want to get better as a player, you want to put yourself in an uncomfortable position. And in two versus two and three versus three, you can kind of hide behind different classes doing different things, you know, but battleships who only stay in the back of the map or cruisers that only do certain things or DDs that try and look for torpedoes, those strategies are actually weak in this mode. You know what is strong? Just being very direct with what you're trying to do. That seems to be the absolute best thing that you can try and do. Just be very direct in whatever you're trying to do. Go for the base, go for the kill, try and defend yourself with active consumables like Hydra. I, I can definitely expect that the Bismarck's gonna be very strong. But notice, the Charles is stuck outside of the capture. Anytime he tries to show himself, I'm going to shoot him, and I have more than enough health for him to have no chance. But if you take the objectives and you force him to come to you, you will find that the same outcome applies to random and clan. If you have something the opponent wants, why should you allow him any, any hope of success? You want to stamp out all of his hope. And the best way to do that? Play to your strength, play to your win. Don't try and do too much. And I think this is the best thing that's going to come from rank sprint one versus one. Players are going to recognize certain tactics work better or worse in certain matchups. And I hope that players can take this and apply it to random clan and rank. I really do. I, and that's the way I'm going to treat it. Uh, I'm curious if, uh, you know, you guys have the same feeling on it or you're, you're not even going to think about participating in it. Um, and I don't blame that either. But... This is giving a lot of players, and new players especially, a chance to do something they rarely get to. Fight in a one versus one against literally any same tier ship. I think that's great. After thinking about all the pros and cons, at least I don't have to deal with people saving their stars or refusing to help the team. You know, all of that is really frustrating. I don't necessarily think it's frustrating to lose a matchup because, oh, they hard counter me or they nearly hard counter me because it is at 100% win rate, mind you. It is 80 to 90%. So what does that mean? That means that there are players that are still capable of winning a matchup even if it is their weakest. And that's a good skill for everyone to get a chance to do. So just take the opportunity, look at it as a way to test a lot of different matchups and make yourself a better player for it. I think that's the best way to look at it. And that's how I'm going to treat it. And boy, this guy. We were so close. We misplayed this so hard. But we still killed him just before. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent or the most relevant uploads. You could also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do daily World Watch videos, first impression, how-to, news, and review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you. Have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you next time.